All right, I'm going to talk to you about the Word of God, the Bible. And I hope I don't get too comfortable with just recording off my phone and uploading like this. I know a lot of you like the theatrical videos and things with music. But sitting here watching um, a teaching on marriage and divorce it just got me thinking about the Bible and how we refer to the Bible as the Word of God. And I keep seeing over and over that there's a distinction between the actual words of God, thus says the Lord, or the words of Jesus. There's a distinction of, between that and the ramblings and foolishness of man, which are also in the Bible. I'll give you an example. Whenever God says, thus says the Lord, or the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, or Jesus is speaking, that's the word of God. But in the book of Job, Job says that the things Job's three friends were saying, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, he says they were speaking unrighteously. And so their words are not the word of God, at least the application they were using them. Another example is Moses and Paul, but let's deal with Moses real quick. Moses allowed for divorce. Even if you didn't like your wife. Not adultery, not fornication, not an indecent act, but even if you just simply don't like her anymore, you can divorce. What happens with Jesus? Jesus says, Moses allowed this because your hearts were hard. But then he goes, but I say, now we see God speaking which is clearly the word of God, condemning what Moses did. So you might ask yourself, well, well, didn't Moses speak for God? And here's the dichotomy of the Bible. Yes, the Bible is considered the word of God. Yes, Moses spoke the word of God. But Moses didn't only speak the word of God. And in the Bible, it doesn't only contain the word of God. That's why we see Paul's writings who agreed with Jesus, who was a prophet, who went to heaven, who saw Jesus, spoke the word of God. The teachings and doctrines were of God. But yet you see him bragging and acting like a child, and he says, I'm speaking foolishly right here for a minute, and he says things that are not, obviously, what we would consider the righteous words or holy words of God. So we have Moses, we have Paul, we have Job's friends, three examples. And we could throw in King Solomon in, of Ecclesiastes. Some of the things he says is questionable. And so what I want you to understand about the Bible is that it contains the words of God. But the whole Bible is not considered, shouldn't be considered the word of God. And that's what we need to grow up in and understand. I think that'll help us. It'll help us see more clearly if we can understand that. Okay? So there's a difference between the words of eternal life and there's different kinds of word of God. Right? Jesus gives us the words whereby we can actually be saved and cleansed and forgiven and made new creatures and born again. Then there's specific words that come to specific people for specific projects and direction and things to do in life. And then there's the work of God, the work of God, the history of God, the allowances of God. God allowed that. God permitted that. And then we see the history of the nation. We see God creating the sun, the moon, the stars. All of that is revealed or we should say the revelation of God is in Scripture. So there's the revelation, the handiworks, the workings. There's mysteries in there that we, are, we know exist, but God says, I don't want you to know that. There's things in the Scriptures that are hidden and dark sayings that we may or may not be allowed to understand. And so there's all kinds of things, even the foolishness of man and the words of man that many quote from and say that that's the word of God, which it isn't. 
And so I want you to understand this because it'll be easier for us to avoid traps, misquoting scriptures, and not understanding with clarity what God wants for me. What is actually the spirit of God's word in my life? What have I understood to be God's communication to me directly on how to live my life and distinguish that from other things? historical things, or even what God's allowed the foolishness of man and the old uh, unrighteous behaviors of man, which some would consider to be the word of God, and distinguish those things so that we can be sharp in our discernment and be ready for any wild and strange teachings that come along. I love you guys. I hope that makes sense, and I will see you soon. Don't forget about our Bible study coming up on the weekends, and I might be going out of town, and we may be skipping a Bible study, may be skipping a Bible study in the future, and um, I love you guys, and uh, thanks for your donations. I'll see you later. Peace.